Hello and welcome to lesson number 11. We will talk about um, services. So what's going on on the web and how can we import the web content like services into QGIS. We have done this already to be quite honest. So we were using OpenStreetMap as a base map and this service is something called Tiled Map Service. It's short form for TMS, but we will first look at two other types of OGC compliant, Open Geospatial Consortium, I think it was, um, services that is the WMS and the WFS. Um, the abbreviation stands for Web Mapping Services and Web Feature Services. Web Mapping Services, well, you can imagine like you're sending corner coordinates like boop, 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 to a server, he gets the information. Oh, okay, I need to render information. Uh, then he compiles an image and sends you back the image. What we can see here is, you no, know, what we can see here is a web map service by the company Terrestris. And um, on the right side, you can see the network activity. So let's have a look what's going on if we zoom in to a dedicated area and we will go to Swellendam which is somewhere here I suppose let's have a look you can see that there was just one request sent to the to the to the server and this is the image that was rendered on the server and sent back to us great right and the most or the best thing about it is that you will get the legend right away so it's not like the tiled map service where you just get the images the images are tiled so they it might be a little bit faster but you will get the uh, current settings from the uh, from the visualization as a legend this is just awesome right but how can we add a wms and where can i find those services so first of all there is there are different ways of adding it you, we have already chosen to connect somehow with a geo package. You might remember this. There was our training data with the buildings and the restaurants and roads and schools. And we will connect now with a server. So let's have a look and I've prepared this already with the terrestrial server. So I'm going to WMS. You might ask yourself, what's WMTS? It's web mapping tiled service. So, um, it's almost similar, but it's not giving away the image as one image, but as, a, but as an tiled image. So let's go there, open this up. Oh, you see, I can I already have quite a, quite some entries here. And if we are checking like new connection with the right click, then you get this information scene. And I've already filled this with the data from Terrestris. It is Terrestris. Um, so th there's a URL you need to define. Sometimes the URL looks a little bit, or in most cases, the URL looks a little bit longer. So, um, and then there's some, some get capabilities document and stuff like that. But most, what you need is the base URL and all the things after the question mark. So all the parameters for the services, like, let's have a look here. Service equals WMS version equals 1.1.1 and request some, something else if we see it here so there are a lot of parameters um, given to the to the uh, server the bounding box so the uh, bounding coordinates srs information so what uh, source or what uh, crs what coordinate reference system it shall use here it's 900 913 are you aware what this is? 900, 913? Any idea? No? It's an old, old naming for the web Mercator. So, see the official coordinate reference system is 3857. So we have used this quite a lot in the, in the past, right? So there are a lot of parameters given to the um, 
to the server, server renders the image and gives us back the image. And well, sometimes servers tend to be fast and sometimes they are not. Please make sure to have a look here on, on the other parameters if you are really interested in. So sometimes you need to ignore, ignore the access orientation, you need to ignore report layer contents whatsoever. Take a look at the at the at the documentation of a server. So normally it should be well documented. So that is WMS. Now the second question was okay, okay. So I know there are there is some WMS support in QS. That's cool. Uh, but where can I find them? All right. Well, there is a site called Spatineo or Spatineo or I don't know where this is coming from. Um, Directory, Spatineo directory, and if we are going down here, we can see footprints. Let's have a look here on soil. We'll just select the WMS and we will just address in Africa. So, what you can see here that there are some WMS services out there. You can see the footprint of the service sometimes. So look here, soil nutrition, this service, soil depth from boreholes, it's available up there in the north near France. So it's not really into in Africa. Let's make another selection here on Congo. Soil workability, most of these items are um, worldwide data. And some of those features come from uh, come from Esri service as well, but that should not be our concern right now. FAO soil groups. Let's have a look here. Now this is uh, the detailed side of the service of the WMS. Um, we can now see that the service health is cool. Everything marked in green. So that's quite a good one. So let's take this one. Copy. Create a new connection, name it soil2 or two soil URL. And now you might ask yourself what is OWS? So what's we were talking about WMS, WFS, which comes later on, and OWS. OWS somehow packages everything, puts it into one place. So by saying so. This one here, this WMS service, is just an image, right? So I, I can use the identify feature tool on the image. Or do I get something? Oh, there is something. Blue background. Blue background. That's it, right? Anywhere it is the same. It's the same ID. But the um, the OWS is saying, well, I provide you in a WMS, I will provide you a WFS, and so on. So that's um, something different, right? So let's have a look here on the two soil juice of a web map service, great. And we will select, I don't know, average daily minimum. Temperature add layer to the project. Could take some time now. Now the loading of the layer is finished. So we see a legend entry here. Now we can compare the average daily maximum temperature worldwide. So you see it here, it is transformed. And please make sure you're selecting a layer and it is transformed here to our current CRS. This is done on the fly so always make sure that the information on the layer somehow fits to the underground data right and uh, once again we will try out the identify feature tool here on this layer. Let's have a look. Well it provides us some information so we do have a value of 33.8. Let's have a look here on, on this 20.1 degrees Celsius it is set so this works really really good but now let's have a look on why is it OWS we will move this one we will open up the WFS well there's not so much in here 
but if you if you will go with the with a pure WMS service, it won't get you real data back because it has just an image support. We can have a look here on the properties again on the information. So this is the information here. We are using projected system and it provides us with some metadata. Now let's have a look here on the on the, um, on the WFS services that are around. And the main problem with the not problem but the main disadvantage of a WFS is that it will provide you the whole geometry. That means if you if you're digitizing a country, you know that there could be a lot of vertices in it. So it takes some time. First of all, it takes some time. Second of all, the information will be quite big. And third of all, um, streaming this everything over the web using like like the geometry, the attributes, and so on takes a lot of uh, data to go over the web. And so this is an, yeah some more some more disadvantage of a WFS. So let's have a look here what we can do. Soil regions. That's interesting. So let's have a look and we will add this. So this is obviously streamed by a map server. If you would like to provide your own WFS and WMS services, there are different ways of doing so. So you can try and have a look at GeoServer as a component. Um, you can feed GeoServers, spatial files, you can connect it to a database, and um, there are different different ways of streaming the services via, via GeoServer. Then there's MapServer, a bit older, and I think it was written in PHP, but I'm not really sure. And um, so these are the two uh, core, or then there's QGIS server as well, of course, but um, in the wild, I. I had the impression that GeoServer is per first, then comes MapServer, and the last is uh, QGIS Server. But I'm not into the details here. It is just my uh, my um, point of view. So I've added the WFS server now. Are there any services? Nope. Not at all. So it's not properly working. Let's have a look here on the edits. Or maybe let's try another WFS. We we'll use this one. New connection. What was his name? Simco. Go with this. Okay. No layers available there as well. Why is this? Yeah, it's a map server. There's no no WFS support with this one. This is an ArcGIS based server. So it can take some time to find a good server that behaves the way you would like it to behave. Now I do have one place somewhere else that was not meant to be like this. So let's have a look at this here to the WFS new connection, admin files, and WFS. So this is the connection string. Let's open this up. Mm 
this takes some time. Let's add here to the project. And now we can see it takes really some time. Loading layers and it takes ages to do so. There's just one country loaded right now. Now all the other items will be loaded to the map. And this is what I said. So there's not only the geometry, but you also get all the attributes and all the vertices and all the information alongside. So there's a lot of data going over the map. Um, we will abort this now because I can then select here an entry. This is now all the information I have. All right, so you can see a lot of a lot of empty fields, and this is the way it is. Now, let's clear this in the, in the network um, network activity pane, and once again open up the terrestrial server. We will go with this. Once again, take into account that this is just one call, right? And now see what happens when I'm using, no, I don't want to have this layer anymore. Let's remove this one. Yeah. And now what, now take, take a look what happens if I'm adding an OSM layer. These are the tile map services, right? So we will use uh, monochrome. Now you see that the network manager is just freakingly going mad because it, it loads a lot of tiles. And you can have a look here on the tiles, of course. So these are just images as well. But these are smaller chunks of images according to the zoom level. So first is a zoom level. Then you have the row, the column, I think it was, or column and rows, um, depending on the on the definition of the of the um, of the double of, of the tiled map services, and it will simply go through everything that it has, tries to fetch the tile, get back the tile to the client, and once it has this, it is done. And if you're zooming in and zooming out. It will re-grab the tile or it will ask a server to recreate the tile, depending on whether the, the tile service, the WM, WTMS, uh, WMTS is a, is a cached one or it's just presenting tiles on the fly, so fire and forget. It really depends and uh, some services are quite lame and some services are, are really, really fast. So let's close this more network request tiles timed out. So there were sometimes some tiles missing or they were not uh, they were not able to clear them uh, to get them. And now it seems like I have an image uh, I have a connection issue. So it tries to get all the tiles all the time. So but what we have learned today and this was quite a, a freestyle uh, lesson today was first there are different services out there wms wmts wfs those services um stream different type of data of course wms is streaming one single image wmts is um, slicing up the image into tiles and sends you parts and chunks of the of the data of the of the image and WFS is not rendering an image, it's sending you the raw data and ask you, hey, come on, guy, random, render the image or render the feature, render the attributes and stuff like that. So take it seriously to with data so you can also work with the data even better than with WMS. So WFS is not so, um, it is hard to find good proper WFS services for your need or for the need of a client. So um, this is a bit of an issue, but uh, sometimes the WMS service is the result of an analysis. So there is a good chance that you might get a access to the raw data of the WMS as well. 
And if you're if you're lucky enough, you will find the maintainer of the service, so you will get an email address or something else, and you can also kindly ask whether you will get gain access to the database that is visualized as a WMS. So I hope you liked it. One last sentence. There's a new service character that is uh, vector tiles. Vector tiles is the new fancy shit out there because when we are talking about fa uh, vector tiles, it's about not taking images. But if you had a closer look to to uh, to Google Maps, then, then they are not pushing images anymore. They are pushing vectors to 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 the user. So uh, the vectors are uh, somehow generalized to your current point of view. So it's not like a WFS sending you all the data, but just a generalized idea of a country area or a country border boundary and the attributes with it. And if you're zooming in, it sends you more data, all right? But it does not send you all the more data because you're just zooming in and you won't you won't be interested in all the fancy data, but just on a tiny area, you would like to get the full idea about the geometry. Let's say it's like this. And the, uh, and the next important thing about vector tiles is that is, is vector tiles are just like WFS. You have the geometry and you have the attributes, but you don't have a styling information. And if you apply then a style sheet, some CSS style, right? Then you can really play around with the visualization of the, of the styles. A WMS is just an image. You cannot interact with the image creation process. So you cannot alter the colors or, or change the change the border dash pattern or whatsoever. Not working. With the WFS, you are the guy in charge of or the girl uh, in charge of um, creating a proper um, of creating a proper visualization in terms of symbology. And vector styles somehow yeah, they often come with a preset of um, of a style sheet. But then you can also apply your own set of uh, style rules. Um, take a look at Mapbox; they are doing this quite some since quite some time uh, with MB tiles creation. That was one one early approach of that. And um, but this is this is the next level, and I think um, we won't talk about WMS and WFS in the future so often. It will boil down to vector tiles in the end. But once again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if there are any questions, remarks, and so on, just drop me a line. I will try to answer them right away. Otherwise, um, subscribe, take care, and goodbye.